welcome everyone in rainy Bucharest, beautiful city and we are very sorry that we couldn't offer you the weather that it normally gives over here. It's uh, exceptionally cold and wet, but well, you all experienced yourself. It is the good temperature to stay inside and to uh, have a very fruitful meeting, I guess. Uh, may I ask those people who identify as an artist to raise their hands? Oh, that's quite, quite a good present representation. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And, uh, we hope you will be willing to, experience, to share your experiences of being an artist with us today, because that's the topic of this meeting. And uh, as you may know, uh, some parts of the globe at this time, the life of an artist is uh, governed by policies uh, of withdrawing governments, meaning subsidy co cuts, forcing artists into entrepreneurial modes. In some other parts of the globe, we see that the artists are feeling a re reinforcement of the governmental grip on their work. So it's two opposite uh, directions that governments take. And in these parts of the world, the artists fight to be able to follow their own agenda and not only fit into political agendas of the ones that are paying for paying them. Um, what unites those two worlds is that we are both represented in Europe. And I'm sure that we are also both represented in this hall. Um, and that's another thing that binds us, and that is that the independent artists, those artists that work not commercially and make contemporary arts, are always the worst off. They are the ones that live the most precarious, under the most precarious circumstances. And I think it's good that us all that didn't raise our hands realize that we can make a living thanks to the fact that they have a talent, that they are working under, in many uh, circumstances, precarious circumstances for low incomes and un in insecure circumstances. And I wish that also the administrators and the ministers would realize that they can make a living, thanks to the fact that we have the artists that are still um, sharing their talents with us. Before we will have our uh, first speakers, I would also uh, share with you that uh, you may have noticed that this meeting has been uh, created with some challenges. Uh, we were a bit late with uh, being able to communicate the program. Uh, we were a bit late with communicating that we could be in this wonderful space, the Théâtre National. Uh, and it was only thanks to a handful of people that were working extremely hard, that were extremely generous to receive us, uh, that we are able to sit here and for you and for me to stand here. And first of all, I would like to introduce to you to Mr. John Karamitru, who is the Director General, uh, Managing Director of this uh, wonderful theatre. He is also the President of Uniter, UNITER, the Union for the Performing Artists. He is a great director besides that and he is one of the oldest members of ITM. He was the oldest member here uh, of Romania in ITM, starting in 1992. Please give a warm hand to Mr. Ion Karamitro. Thank 
thank you, Nan, very much for your kind introduction and welcome for you all. I look around and I see so many young people, and I'm very happy that theater world is under the control of such a wonderful uh, crowd. I say so because uh, um, in 1994, as a member of IATM, I've been invited to Brussels and next year to, to Spain uh, to represent my Romanian structure as ITI, Romanian Uniter. And uh, I remember we were in trouble in this country at the time because of the neo-communist regime coming in power as a result of an anti-communist revolution. Uh, it's a bitter joke about it, but it was really um, dangerous for our life and for the new liberty. So in 95, I moderated um, in Sevilla a group of IATM with this uh, uh, main proposition, official structure and the new vision of culture Strong movements against the new liberties. Uh, it was the, at the origin of a letter I presented finally to help uh, our liberty in Romania, signed by all the members of ITM at the time, and published in Romania, published in foreign uh, newspapers, and having a real important echo into the, uh, this uh, structures I mentioned to you. So I still remember ITM is a wonderful body. It's a strong, uh, important European uh, family. So as soon as is possible, you have to remember this uh, friendship and this uh, unanimity um, uh, help we had. On the other hand, uh, we call this new, I mean, we called our national theater after the reconstruction, new theater for a new audience, for a new public. So you are the newest visitors and public. I hope you are coming to see our shows these days. These days. And uh, the reason of telling uh, such a slogan uh, for our activity is that we open large doors for the young generation. We have in this very moment seven different stages. One is the work in progress on the roof for the summertime uh, seasons for 300 seats. Uh, another new one is the media hall you visited recently this morning in this afternoon. And uh, the little stage, which is for 130 seats, uh, given exclusively to the young generation experiment theater, and uh, exclusively, I say, for those having no jobs into the theater. In this very moment in Romania, in the drama department of our uh, culture activity, we have about 4,000 jobless actors and 50 theaters all around Romania. Uh, they are 4,000 because after the revolution, every university centers open a drama school. So every year there are about 300, 350 people leaving the university and having a diploma as a bachelor in art. There is no room for them into the professional theaters. This independent activity uh, is still very, in Romania, I mean, still very timid and no uh, money for them, no rules for them, most more or less nothing. And from nothing, you do nothing sometime. But talent exists. So we decided to give this uh, stages for them 
to follow their talent and to invite them to perform into our productions later. Uh, we have in this very moment 230 young collaborators into the theater, but they are 4,000. That's a moment of thinking uh, for our society, but I don't think there is an horizon of, of them. So then is this stage you are now here, which is unique in Europe. Probably someone could tell you earlier that this stage, this room is transformable. In 22 minutes, the stalls is lifted, coming to land on the stage, making a free open space here. The, these two uh, walls move backstage, and from behind, if you open the two small doors, you'll see two packages of seats coming, and and finishing uh, an arena stage in 22 minutes. It was done in 1968 by the Romanian engineers. After the Vienna technology, we invited at the time to do uh, what was the very modern into the, uh, the theater technology. They refused to do it. Finally, it was done by our Romanian engineers. If you like to see a show, it's Saturday. Evening, half past seven, a play written by Matei Vishniak, a famous Romanian playwright living in Paris, uh, called Engagement of a Clown. You'll see in the first part like that, Italian stage, the first part. Then we are going downstairs to see a real circus show. And coming back for the second part, you'll be in the arena. And to see the, half, the second part of the play into the arena. And uh, I can't tell you more because you are here for a few days. You can see with your own eyes everything I want to tell you now. I'll give an end to my speech telling you that we hope to have at the end of September, the last week in September, a showcase of our productions. And those interested could uh, tell us if they want to come. Thank you very much and be welcome. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Karamitro. Um, as I said, we, had, we were organizing this meeting in quite a short time, and uh, there was a, a driving force behind it that was, is called Corina Suteu. Unfortunately, she is not here yet, but she will arrive this evening and you will definitely meet with her. Um, she proposed us to our local co-organizer, Vava Stevanescu, who is the director of the National Center for Dance, having a very interesting history that she will definitely share with you, probably at another moment than now, because she only now gets five minutes and she can talk an hour about that, I can tell you. And it's a very interesting history of the dance, of, of the contemporary dance in Romania that she has to share. Give a warm hand to Vava Stevanescu, who with her team, her whole team, really made this possible. Thank you very much for this introduction. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm Vava Stefanescu and I'm running National Center for Dance in Bucharest, which is a um, very new institution. It's not like National Theater here. Uh, works only with independence, which is interesting. <laughs> And because in contemporary dance um, in Romania, you can be only independent as an artist. And uh, I'm, we find ourselves in a very new situation as institution uh, to be uh, happy organizers of the meeting of IETM. Here, but if you would wait for two years, we could organize that in the new venue, which will 
it's Sala Omnia, the Omnia Hall, which will be ready to welcome you in 2019. So we are very happy to announce that. Um, so, I'm very happy also to say welcome and go see all performances programmed and there are a lot of performances, theatre and dance performances, which uh, are not in the program, but uh, at the desk uh, you can find information about more of that. We had, I mean, the situation was that we couldn't um, put everything in the program for you, but um, especially independent work worth to be uh, seen. So also, uh, I hope you will visit uh, our venue, which is marked on your programs. I hope you have it. We have three uh, performances pr um, programmed. And I'm not good with speeches, so <laughs> welcome and have fun in rainy Bucharest. Thank you, Ava. Thank you. Maybe I shall uh, with you. This, uh, I mean, the, the fact that we are organizers, uh, co-organizers, um, it was possible because of the National Cultural Fund, which um put quite <laughs> a little bit of money for making this possible so now maybe you will introduce <laughs> well then i only have to because indeed no meeting without a bit of money and the generosity of the national funds for culture um irina Chos, please give her a hand Good afternoon. I'm very happy you are all here and I'm very happy I could lend a hand to the realization of this uh, important meeting because I have to tell you I know about IETM since the early 90s and it's very important that Mr. Karamitri is here because he was the one to plant the seed of IETM in Romania. Not only of IETM, he planted the seed of UNITAR, he planted the seed of uh, of uh, the National Cultural Fund. He is uh, someone who uh, launched many paths in contemporary culture in Romania, especially in the performative field. Um, I have to uh, say that what impressed me most about ITM was the title, and it was the fact that it was an informal um, European theater meeting, and I think this is very important to keep in mind. Although the profile of ITM changed, and now it became uh, an international network with uh, professionals from all the performative fields, um, I think that um, the informal aspect is what brings most of creativity and what uh, enables connections and uh, collaborations uh, throughout countries and throughout cultures. Um, I'm not going to take much longer of your time, but I would like to quote uh, Dragan Kleich, who said, uh, cultures do not dialogue with each other. They complete, clash, fight, interact, and mutually influence it, each other. So cultures are not alike. Cultures are different, and it is important to stay different. So um, I hope this IETM meeting will be for all of you an opportunity for creative engagement and I wish you all a good stay in Bucharest. Thank you. Thank you. There are more, two more thank yous. Um, one is for George Ivascu from the municipal Metropolis Theatre, who is the, which is the theatre that offers our welcome drink that we will have after our keynote <laughs> downstairs near the registration desk. And uh, the other one is Tima Suara, 
Cult Capital of Culture 2021. I just saw them arrive. Uh, and um, they will offer our farewell brunch on Sunday in the National Center of Dance. Uh, this will also be the moment when Timisoara will present their provisional program. So please come in time. We start 11.30 sharp, I told them. So if you want to know more about Timisoara, please be in time, 11.30, Center, National Center for the Dance on Sunday. Um, another a uh, moment that we really would love you to have you um, together uh, joining us is at the General Assembly on Saturday afternoon because we need a quorum. Otherwise, we won't have a full board next year. So in order to have a good governance of ITM, you're really needed. That's one of the reasons. The other reasons is that I'm very... Um, happy that I, if I could share with you our new strategy for the next four years because we got the new Creative Europe grant, so ITM is safe for the next four years. And it would be nice. <laughs> it's always good to hear your comments uh, on the program. Um, also in the General Assembly and afterwards in the talks and listens. Okay, and then now we, we came to the moment that I can introduce to you our keynote speaker, well-known poet and author from Romania, Mr. Mircea, uh, Car Mircea Cartarescu, Mircea Cartarescu, you see, I always stumbles at one point moment and that's the most important moment. Please give him a warm applause. For the French I'm Mircea, for the English I'm Mircea, for the other people I'm, I'm different. But uh, for my compatriots, I'm Mircea, Mircea Cartarescu. Mircea is a male name in our country, though it, en it ends with an A, uh, and uh, this is why uh, uh, it happens to me all the time to get uh, letters um, addressed to Mrs. Cartarescu. Uh, I'm very much used to it, uh, and uh, I'm not uh, complaining anymore. Uh, actually, you know it only too well uh, that uh, the artists have uh, uh, actually uh, a double sex. Uh, all of them are, in a way or another, androgynous. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm really, really very glad to be here with you. Uh, I feel... Uh, really very honored because I really admire you. I admire you. I admire you very much. I admire the artists. I admire the people whose body listen to them. I have always wanted to be one of you. I have always wanted, since I can remember, to know how to dance, to be able to sing, to be able to perform, to be somebody, to have a talent, to be somebody in the other people's eyes, to have an audience, uh, to have people that get joy from what I do. And I, I think I tried most, mostly everything. Um, when I was very young, I tried to play ping pong, for example. I thought uh, I will make a career out of this, and I was pretty good, but I never got to be a professional. Uh, now I can beat uh, most of you, but uh, uh, the, 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 the people that uh, went to a club for, um, I don't know, one year have no problems with me. Uh, so I couldn't do this. I tried to play the guitar like everyone. I tried to be a star in the summer camps and uh, to gather the girls around me. I, I couldn't do it uh, uh, as well. I tried to sing, I tried to dance, 
uh, at least in my family, in, uh, in, in, at, uh, at family parties. I couldn't, to the dismay of my wife uh, and other, other uh, partners, uh, because I don't know. My body is against me, is against what I, 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 I try to, uh, to um, uh, order it. And uh, because I was uh, such disappointed, so much disappointed with me, I, start, I started to write, when I was about 15, I, start, I started to write how disappointed I was with me, because I had no talent. And uh, paradoxically, this proved to be my only talent. <laughs> Saying that I have no talent, that I cannot dance, that I cannot talk as somebody sings. The only thing about me was the way I walked. Uh, and uh, writing fiction, writing prose, for me is actually, I, I don't think uh, uh, of it as a talent. I think of it as the way I walk. It's, it's some, something so natural for me that uh, uh, it's like the air I breathe. I, I never think about it. Uh, I still keep in my mind uh, the, um, the sadness of not being able to make moves with my arms, with my, with my uh, feet, uh, with my fingers, with uh, anything but with my mind. Uh, I cannot dance, but my mind can. Uh, writing poetry is dancing. Uh, um, you see a, a mind dancing naked in front of you whenever you read a poem, a real poem, a good poem. You see a mind performing in front of you whenever you, you read uh, a very good uh, short story. This is uh, the magic that happened to me and uh, it's, it's my very small consolation uh, because consolation of the fact uh, uh, that, uh, that I cannot do anything else. I'm not good with anything else. So um, I'm a sort of a, an artist myself, uh, but a very special kind of artist. Uh, I don't know if you thought about it, but uh, you, you, the performers, you cannot perform without a public around you. You have to have a public. Mr. Karamitru, who has been a, an actor all his life, I don't know if he can uh, perform in his bathroom alone. I, I doubt it. I doubt that any of you can perform only for yourself. But a poet always does this. this. Poetry is an art of silence. Uh, fiction is an art of silence, an art of solitude, an art of isolation, an art of, uh, I don't know, of uh, intuition. Um, you are always alone. You are like a motherless child. You, are, you feel the lo loneliness person in the world. When you are doing your job, when you are performing, when you want to see people cheering around you and nobody cheers, you never hear someone cheering uh, uh, when, when you write a poem. Of course, you can read it afterward, afterwards in a literary circle or uh, uh, on a stage or in a poetry slam, and you get some, some hint of, of what this art actually should have been and what this art actually was all the time. Because, you know, Bob Dylan got the Nobel Prize last year for poetry, for literature. Though he, he's, a, he's a, um, a singer, he's a songwriter, he's, he, he has never been uh, like, uh, for example, Leonard Cohen was a real poet on the paper. But uh, let us not forget that all the, the old performers were like that. Homerus was like that, Homer, sorry, was like that. Um, I don't know, Propertius was like that, Virgil was like that. They were, they were performing their, their poems. They were not uh, writing them on the paper for people to read. They were singing them. Uh, that's uh, why we call lyrical poetry um, the poems uh, of love, for example, because they were sang and accompanied by the 
lira by the uh, uh, so, uh, some kind of uh, a pop, uh, um, a chord instrument in the antiqu antiquity times. So in uh, ancient times, poets were also performers, but after that, they isolated themselves like leper people. Uh, they felt themselves guilty about that, and they always tried to escape this condition and uh, never, never succeed. Uh, and more, I would say more, the greatest of the writers are the people the most lonely of, of, uh, of all. Think, of, think about Franz Kafka. Kafka, like Virgil, um, 2,000 years before, didn't want to leave anything for the people. He only wrote hundreds of pages just to be destroyed after his death. He only wrote for himself. He never wanted to publish. He never wanted to be acclaimed. He never wanted the, the wish, the desire of the other, as we say. He did his work as a solitary monk. He was a, a sort of a martyr of, uh, of the idea of literature. So literature is, in a way, going in the other direction um, as compared to all the other arts. It's a, a sort of a, I don't know, um, pig-headed art. It's sort of a um, background, uh, backwards, sorry, uh, art. A, a, a very strange, a very strange kind of, kind of expressing uh, yourself. But it still, it still is art. And uh, a poet is also an artist because she or he shares with a real artist, with you, with the performers, one thing. If a poet has no audience, no real audience, as you are in front of me now, he has or she has that little thing that cannot, cannot miss from any art, which is grace. Grace is the most essential thing of the arts. You have grace or you don't have grace. You have this kind of levitation. You can put your mind in levitation and put the other's mind, minds in levitation. You can show them a glimpse of a, a wonderful and huge world because we are very small and the world is huge. Uh, you, can, you can show the people what you have seen in your visions and this is grace. Nobody can give it to you. Nobody can take it from you because grace is what you are as, as an artist. Uh, grace is poetry and poetry is grace. Uh, music is poetry and poetry is music and so on. <clears throat> so I can speak of art in a way in front of you, though I'm a bit ashamed about this. I'm not like you and I, I, I would give 10 years from my life to be like you. And now, now I get to the uh, real core of what I have to tell you. It's nothing new. Um, I will only tell you things that you know as well as I, I, uh, I do, but things that must be reminded to people from time to time because they are essential. Let us imagine um, a piano player of genius, one of the greatest, uh, who brings tremendous joy to, to the people who listen to him. And after the show, his show is over, he gets outside, walks on the street, and meets all kinds of people. He meets humi humiliated people. He meets uh, people humiliated because of their race. He meets humiliated people because of their poverty. He meets humiliated people because of their gender, gender orientation and so on. There are so many motives for someone to be humiliated but by his or her peers. What has this person to do when he meets this kind of, of, uh, of uh, things? Should he act 
should he interfere or should he or she just pass because he is a great artist, because he can play the piano better than anyone else. What does it matter if he goes and, uh, uh, and says what uh, uh, or does what has to be done in these uh, um, um, circumstances? Of course, every one of us know the answer. We know the answer. We have to act. We have to inter interfere with uh, the, the bad people who do this kind of things. But uh, fewer of us know why. Why has an artist to do this? Isn't enough for an artist to create beauty? We are here on this earth to create beauty. This is our job. This is what we have to do and we can do and other people cannot or can in a, in a very small, small uh, uh, amount. Isn't this enough? We are winged people. We are privileged people. We are stars. Why should we go and tell the people it's not fair and it's not right what they do? Uh, the old Greeks knew the, the answer. They had a fundamental notion that they called kalokagaton. Maybe you heard about, you surely heard about this notion, which fundamentally means, it means lots of things, but fundamentally it means that three notions, <coughs> which we all know, truth, good, and beauty, are actually the same. The Greeks knew that it cannot be imagined a world that is true without being good and without being beautiful. You cannot imagine a world that is good without being true and beautiful. You cannot imagine a world that is beautiful without being the other two uh, qualities, with, without having the other two qualities. So an artist, a producer, of the beauty cannot be only an artist. He can, he can be and he should be, she can be, she should be some other kind kinds of, of a person. The same person having three um, ways of acting in three different, different situa situations. When you are performing in front of the people, you are on the side of the beauty. How can you be on the side of the truth? It's easy, being an intellectual. So the intellectual is sometimes opposed to the artist. The artist thinks with his heart. The intellectual thinks with his mind. But it's the one and the same thing, actually. Because an intellectual <coughs> is uh, the one who deals with ideas. And ideas for being real should be also beautiful and should be also good. An intellectual is a person who thinks with compassion, with empathy about the others, ab about all the other people, about all his peers, all his compatriots, all the people in the world. He can and he must, in a way, think of their good. But thinking of their good transforms the intellectual in a citizen, as we all are. A citizen is the representation of the good in this trinity, in these um, three ways of being the same. Um, a citizen is what an artist should be and what an intellectual should be. Because an artist represents the heart, the, the, the feelings. An intellectual represents the re reason and the mind. A citizen represents the action. So it's hard to imagine for me an artist who um, is very good in what he does. He's a very good singer, a very good writer, a very, a very good uh, uh, dancer, a very good poet. Um, but who, uh, who chooses a wrong direction. It's very hard to me 
to think of, uh, of someone who is a very good piano player, but he is also a Nazi, a Nazist. Or who, someone who is um, um, a very good um, uh, thinker, but um, he, uh, he uh, uh, falls himself under the fascination of a, a very bad ideology, uh, becoming a terrorist, for example. It's, it's not possible in a way. I know that there are some examples. I know that Céline, for example, in the French literature, um, used to um, have um, uh, very bad uh, um, feelings about the Jews, for example. He was an anti-Semitist. But these are exceptions. Usually, and I'm, I'm an optimist, I, 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 I believe in the human, uh, in the human uh, um, um, mind, in a way. Um, I don't think that, is it, that it is possible uh, to be like that. This um, uh, expression of the, the old Greeks, kalokagaton, is the, the way that we should look the things. We should be very good artists, but we should think about what happens around us, and unfortunately, very bad things happen uh, uh, of late. And of course, we should take some action to make the world a little better, because we are really very small. Um, this is uh, what I should have said, said first, uh, because it's a, it's a thing that we, we have to remind all the time. Um, yesterday, uh, a meteorite, as you know, just passed over our heads um, at a very short distance from the Earth. If it, it hit the, the earth, there would have been some, uh, some uh, uh, unpleasant uh, conse consequences, one of them being that my conference would have been canceled, for example. Um, and also some other little uh, consequences like the, the erase of the human race. Uh, so um, we, we, are, we, we only have this extremely tiny, tiny world. Uh, we have a, a small planet surround, surrounded by a blue atmosphere. In the known universe, there are 2.3 trillion galaxies, each, each of them with, I don't know, billions of, of stars. Where is the place for salvation? Where is the place for somebody looking right towards our, our world? Well, salvation is in our hands, is at our finger, finger, fingers. Uh, we can do it. Nobody will do it uh, um, instead of us. But actually, uh, as you know only too well, we are good at the reverse. Um, during our history, we proved to be very good at destroying ourselves, not at uh, creating um, wonderful condition for, for everyone. So, uh, uh, given the conditions that we have to live today, we have to take some action. I only remind you what are those conditions that uh, we're living in. I think we are doing bad. Uh, the world is very badly uh, ruled at this moment um, from many points of view, not only from the political point of view. Of course, from this point of view, we, had, we have Syria, we have North Korea, we have Venezuela, we have what happens in Europe. Europe has never been in this terrible condition from the Second World War, uh, I, I'm afraid to, to say so. Uh, we look everywhere and we see only damage. We see dictators. We see um, abominations, as the Bible says. We see in, uh, on one side uh, Donald Trump. We see on the other side Putin. We see Erdogan. We only, only see bad things. Uh, where are the great leaders 
that we used to have. We don't trust in anyone now. Where are the parties that we used to trust in? They are in a huge crisis. Every, every, every side of the political world that we are looking towards seems to be in a crisis, seems to be in a, in, in a big change and in not, not in a good change. Uh, it seems like democracy that only 15 years ago everybody believed in. And Francis Fukuyama in his, uh, in his book said that, uh, well, actually the, the Western democracy won, won everywhere because every state, at least uh, as, uh, as uh, an ideal, uh, talked about democracy, about the democratic principles and values. Now it's the other way around. Most of the states in Europe and outside Europe seem to try to get rid of democracy, seem to try to get rid of the, the Western values, seem to try to get rid of everything that our culture is uh, centered on. Um, the nationalisms of all kinds are uh, revigorated in the Eastern Europe. Uh, most, many of the countries uh, are, uh, show some, some nationalist uh, and very populist tendencies. Uh, Romania has left uh, one of the very few practically democratic uh, country in the whole region. It's very scary for us. Um, many countries show uh, a tendency toward what, towards what we call um, democratures, half democracy, ha half dictatures, so dictatorships. Sorry. So. Uh, uh, it's a very scary situation from the political point of view. We cannot just stay and wait to be destroyed, to be destroyed by this, by this uh, kind of people. Uh, we have to act, we have the power to act, as you all know. We have at least to get into the street and shout, shout our, our uh, uh, wishes, uh, shout our principles, shout about stand up for something, shout about our values. And uh, I think this is a very good thing to do, even for the artists. The artists should get into the streets with their compatriots and shout against what they think is evil in the politics. I did this uh, uh, the whole winter. Uh, I was in the street with many artists, many Romanian artists in, in all the fields, um, shouting and occupying a place in, uh, in the squares uh, for democracy, for democracy, for liberty, for everything was wrong in my country. Against, of course, everything was wrong in my country. Uh, and it was minus 10 degrees and I had three uh, layers of coats on me and two hats, one uh, above the other. Uh, it was really terrible, but I, I knew I had to do it. And uh, at a certain moment, we were 600,000 people in the streets, in all the cities and on all the villages of Romania. It was the famous resist movement, resist movement, uh, which spread after that, spread uh, all around Europe and maybe in the States too. So each of us can do something. Uh, even if we, you, feel a, you feel an empty place in a, in, a, in a square or on the street, it's important. It's really very important. But unfortunately, the challenges that we all, we're all facing, facing do not end in, with politics. We are in the middle of a technological revolution. I think this is even more important and more dangerous than, uh, than the bad state of the world, world politics. We um, are on the brink now. We, we uh, feel, many of us feel that if we are making only one wrong step in front of us, we just fall. If we fall in the precipice. Um, it's uh, on one side the huge revolution that the internet brought and uh, the um, social networks brought. 
uh, we um, now are in the middle of it. We cannot see it uh, clearly. We cannot imagine how much change is this, that each one, for the first time in our history, each one ca can connect with each one. Everyone can connect with everyone in, on the whole planet. Uh, seven billion people connected. But this is only the, the ideal uh, situation because um, actually what we see on these networks and what we see uh, uh, hap that happens there, we see much hatred. We see a lot of hatred. We see a lot of haters. We see a lot of trolls. We see people spreading uh, false and dangerous ideas. We see people spread, spreading false and fake news. We see that what we thought of as a, a sort of a fraternity among all the people change, changes the other way around, becoming a, a general hatred among people. Um, actually, we don't share on the internet, on the Facebook, on the Twitter, and so on, we don't share the, the good things in, in ourselves. We are uh, aggressed all the time by the people who take advantage of this wonderful uh, media to, uh, to spread hatred. Um, of course, I, I won't talk about the other dangers of, uh, of our uh, uh, scientific, technical, and social revolution. And there's another threat which is as great and connected to the others, the ideological threats. All kinds of ideological um, uh, monstrosities that we uh, feel around ourselves as, as, as cancer, uh, as cancer, uh, uh, um, um, metastasis, uh, religious ideologies, social ideologies, political ideologies, ideologies of all kinds, uh, many of them extremist. So what the artist can do when uh, he, um, he finds violence, uh, when he finds or she finds um, intimidation, when he finds, um, um, I don't know, uh, despise for people because they are black, because they are uh, homosexuals, because they are, uh, I don't know, poor, uh, because they, they don't belong to the place where they are forced to be when they are immigrants. What can we do about it? We can do. We can do because we are stars because we are the stars of the societies, because the people know us, because we are opinion makers. Even if we dance, if we, even if we don't talk, even, even if we, we are singers, we can sing our beliefs. Uh, and I, I truly believe in this. We can dance our beliefs. We can uh, speak in poetry our, our beliefs. We can paint our beliefs. We can uh, sculpture our, our beliefs. We can make movies about what we really think about the state of this world because we, we don't have another world. This is the only one that we have. It can be destroyed at any time by a meteorite, by a madman who has uh, um, the nu nuclear panel in front of him or by any other thing, by, by uh, pollution, by, uh, by destroying the... the animal uh, <coughs> and the vegetal world and so on. So I think um, that even if we, we lose a lot by doing this, even if we get a lot of enemies by doing this, uh, if we, even if we are banned for our ideas, I think that we still must stand, stand up for, for them because it's, it's a, in a way, um, in our definition as artists. It's, it is in our definition. Uh, we bring the people beauty, which is also truth. We bring the people truth, which is also good. So we must not forget that 
we are privileged people. And we have to share our privileges with the unprivileged ones, just to make a better world in, in, in a way and uh, in, in, a, in a world and in a very simple one. Um, I got to these ideas um, rather, rather um, late, late. Um, I did not um, think like that always. Uh, and I think all of us have to fight the barbarian in himself or in herself. We don't have to, uh, to uh, tell ourselves that we are good, that we are worthy, uh, because we are not. Because all of us, and it's no, it's no uh, um, I don't know, it's no secret, all of us are actually racists. All of us are actually homophobic. All of us are actually, um, I don't know, have uh, all the, these kinds of uh, uh, cliches and discriminations in herself or in his, himself. It's our bad uh, inheritance. Uh, our species is violent. Uh, the primates are violent. The chimps are violent. The, the gorillas are violent. So we have to know that we have violence in ourselves and we have the, 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 the evil in ourselves, but at the same time that we can fight it, we can keep it underground and we can try to show the other side of ourselves, the, the lighter side to the other people. Uh, this is, uh, these are some thoughts that I wanted to share with you. Uh, you only know them very well, uh, but as I said, sometimes they have to be reminded. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, I hope uh, we'll become close friends, most of us. Thank you, Mirza Katarescu. Um, before we, well, now it's time for our drink and for all the meetings and greetings that we didn't uh, manage to do up till now. Um, I forgot to uh, say thank you to for uh, UNITER, which, as Vava told me, was a really big help in realizing this meeting. So UNITER, the Union for the, Perform for the Artists, also supported very much <laughs> our being here. Okay, time for a drink. Hope to see you downstairs. And don't forget that the uh, performances used to start early here.